Hey guys, uh, I, uh, this is, this is going to be a little weird for me. Uh, I, I've been kind of meaning to, to talk about this for a very long time. Not necessarily just because... Well, mostly, yeah, because it's important to me. But because it's... <sighs> it's such a huge thing in my life that I, I really can't... I can't not talk about it anymore, if you want me to be perfectly honest. There are a lot of things that I can internalize. There's a lot of things that I can go on and pretend that I that, that, that don't matter to me as much as they do. There are a lot of things that I'll play close to the chest and not talk about. But this, this definitely isn't really one of them. Um... I let me let me just start at the beginning here because this this is probably going to be a long-winded discussion on this on my part and it's it's less a attempt of me trying to justify a lot of things and it's just me being honest not not just with all of you if you watch this but uh with myself uh, a lot because it's something it's something that i've been kind of struggling with mentally a lot over the past several years but also because uh it's led to a lot of friction it's led to a lot of strife, and it's led to a lot of breaking of relationships and friendships uh, over the years for me. Um, I... I want to talk about Mystic Hills, and no, I don't want to talk about the, the Minecraft roleplay Mystic Hills... I want to talk about my Mystic Hills. <laughs> and it's... It's one of those things that I understand why... Uh, certain people are more than willing to move on, more than willing to walk away from things of this nature. And I probably more than anyone understand that separating the role play from what I'm trying to do with it now, you really can't separate the two in, in a lot of ways. Because there were a lot of motivations involved with me writing the the original three seasons of Mystic Hills. But probably the biggest one was... I wasn't writing it for Mania. I wasn't writing it for the people who would watch it. I was writing it for me. I wanted to make something that was worth writing. It's been a big goal of mine for the better part of 10 years that I want to make something worth writing. And it's, <coughs> it's, it's been a struggle to say the least. Um, 
the the bridges that have been burned in my attempts to make something that means something to me have been monumental uh I, I've cut ties with a lot of great people, and I've cut ties with a lot of not-so-great people. Um, but I think a lot of it also has to, has to, has, it has to be said, is that we're definitely not the same people anymore. Who I was when I wrote the original Mystic Hills is not the person I am who is writing the current mystic hills it's it's very the difference is night and day and it's something that i i struggle to think about sometimes a lot i i have a bad habit of and I, I've, I made it in a, I made it a rule. I remember talking about it at one point. I made it a rule that I would never bring this up again unless it was a real update with real progress. Uh, about my project that it, it didn't have anything to do with mania it didn't have anything to do with any kind of drama that that was the rule that i made for myself uh when i said it because it was i may not agree with chris on a lot of our, our stances on the whole issues between mania and myself but there is one thing that he said that was absolutely true that i will absolutely concede and agree with and it's that the the fighting that we were doing was completely kneecapping and destroying our abilities to do anything else And the the changes that I've made, the the things that I have managed to get written since I put all of this to bed, since I blocked everyone involved in that situation, since I stopped talking about it, since I actually put my foot down and made my position absolutely clear and that I would not budge even if they tried to make me. was that I have probably made more progress on my Mystic Hills in the last six to seven months than I have in the two years that I've been trying to write it. And it is absolutely incredible how much I have changed it, how much I have actually made it my own since the original. Because... And I don't think I've ever made this point clear. I don't think I've ever... Uh, I don't think I've ever said it out loud because it, it, it would have been a sign of weakness at the time. And, and that's rule number one of warfare. You never let them see you bleed. Never give them an inch or they'll take a mile. It's It's one of those things whenever you're having a dispute with someone over things that matter more to you than it does to them 
that a lot of people don't seem to understand, including a lot of the people involved. I think to this day, none of them ever truly understand how much Mystic Hills means to me, more than it means to them. But the very beginnings of Mystic Hills were not mine. Season 1 was not mine. I didn't write it. I didn't have any involvement with it. Season 1 was Mania's original vision for the show. It was supposed to be this show that she made just like every other roleplay that she decided to make uh, without me, it's it's the exact same type of vision that she's had. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say whether or not it ever is going to work or not. That's That's not my place to say. I have my opinions. My opinions are mine. You deduce what you will from from her content now. Uh, and to clarify, the original Mystic Hills is gone. She has taken it down. It doesn't exist anymore. I don't know if she's privated them or if she's deleted them. Either way, if you ask me personally, I don't care. I, I, and I mean that sincerely, I don't care if she deleted them. I, I don't care if she threw away all of that, that work. Uh, I don't care, a and I say it without hesitation, I don't really care what direction she has for herself, if she has one at all, because... Last time I checked, she's she has as much direction as she's ever had, which is zero. <laughs> she doesn't know what she wants. She doesn't know what she wants to do. And, and that's kind of been a huge part of why we, uh, as creatives, don't get along very well. And it's because where I have a specific vision that I am pushing for, that I have something in my head that I want to make real, to put it on the document, to put it down on paper, to to make it come to life, whether it's, it's through whatever means that I have in the future. It is because of that vision that it happens. Whereas she very much still, to this day, is just throwing ideas against the wall and hoping something sticks. Personally, I hope she continues to distance herself from role plays. I think she needs to stop, personally. I think it's something she needs to leave behind. She needs to pursue something more practical for for herself i if, if it were up to me i would tell if i were to tell her anything i would say quit making role plays focus on vtubing and nothing else matters if i were to say anything in terms of her content in terms of how she is personally we'd be here all day i i don't have time and i don't care to to, to talk about those kinds of things right now that's not why i'm here <laughs> Ugh. but yeah that's not why i'm here i want to talk about how much this means to me because it this is not the original document. This is the, this is version two 
I've been tempted to make a third version of this document. I think I still have the original somewhere in here. There it is, version one. Version one is vastly different from version two because version one is <coughs> extremely proof of concept. Like, it's three and a half pages long. It's not super detailed. And it's not... It's definitely not the finalized version. And that's never what this document was supposed to be. This document was never supposed to be the, the perfect version. I don't think I will ever be able to make a perfect version of what I have a as my vision for this story. But, whereas version one was three and a half pages, this one is seven pages and still not done. This, this version of my, my, my vision for this story isn't even done. And you can already see from my tabs here, I have things done for every single one. I have huge amounts finished. For every single one. It's it's one of these things that I <clears throat> and this is sort of my process. I never constrain myself to working on one section of a story at a time. I never do that. And and there's a lot of reasons why I don't do that. One of the reasons why I don't do that is because I find it extremely limiting. Especially especially when it comes to storytelling because if you because the way I come up with story ideas they're always jumbled up they're never in order they're never in the right order I came up with a lot of things that is at the end of this story rather than what's actually at the beginning. If you noticed, Act 1 is the shortest of the list, whereas Act 2 and 3 are at least two pages long. And that's because starting the story is always the hardest part. And working on this story has been a huge, huge thing for me. Because whether people realize it or not, this, this thing right here in front of your face is the most ambitious, the, the most uh, creative thing, the most life-changing thing that I have ever worked on. And the, the passions and the, the love and the, the, the hate and the, the spite that has gone into all of this. It's all, 
it's all part of the same thing because all of those things have have kind of come together into this bubble of me making something that's actually good and it's it's kind of a new thing for me on uh, being able to sit here and say that i think this is a good story and there's so much of this story that i haven't been able to put down in words on this document because i have a extremely hard time uh, translating what happens and what I come up with in my brain and putting it onto the document. I have done my absolute best to try and make it happen, but it, it's taken me very, very, very long amounts of time to be able to do that. And it's <sighs> it's one of those things that we're we're gonna get real for a second here, okay? I am twenty five years old. I turned twenty six four months from today uh, it's the fourth when i'm recording this my 26th birthday is four months from now and uh especially recently it's it's very much dawned on me that i really do not have that much longer uh, on this planet uh the the inevitability of my my oncoming death is is very much something that i i it's been on my mind a lot and for those of you who don't understand what i mean i am very i am neurodivergent i've been diagnosed with a lot of different mental uh disorders throughout my life adhd Asperger's, autism, I, I, I've been diagnosed with a lot of different things, and I think it has evolved and changed over time as I get older. But even if I do make it to 30, my chances of having a stroke double when I hit 30. There, there is a lot of correlation. There's a lot of studies out there that have a lot of correlation between neurodivergence uh, and, and a lot of mental disorders and the risk of, of stroke or brain aneurysm. Like, there, there's, there's a lot of things that are correlated there. <laughs> And that's an uh, that's unfortunately a reality that I have to I have to I have to deal with I I have to cope with that, and it's something that's been weighing on me a lot more, uh, recently because I I've been having problem my like it, it feels like my body is falling apart a lot of these days like I've been having problems with my leg, uh, my right leg it's kind of, it's. I've been having this really, really strange pain in my right leg for for months, for for over a year. I've been having this strange pain in my leg, and it, it, it it's it's very much like I don't know what it is, and I'm 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 simultaneously not afraid and very afraid i'm so i'm terrified of what it could signify because i don't know if it's actual muscle pain or if it's psychological pain uh 
showing itself through physical means and what that could entail. It, it could entail that there's something going on in my brain that I don't know about that is precursors to issues that I'm going to have eventually. Like, I don't know. I I haven't been to the hospital to 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 get my leg looked at, to 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 get my brain scan, to get to get a brain scan, to get an MRI and figure out what's going on. Um and and a lot of that and a lot of that has to do with this. The, there's a reason why I'm talking about it. Because, as I said, I don't have I, – I, I never I, – I never really expected myself to, to live very long. And it, it, it's unfortunate, but it, it's kind of the reality of my situation. Because even if by some miracle I make it to 30, I won't make it to 40. It's it's one of those things that I have to be realistic about, that I have to be honest with myself about. <laughs> oh. That I don't have an infinite amount of time to just be living like everybody else lives. I I can't focus on a 9 to 5 job day in and day out and pursue these these mundane regular person things like getting my own place to live, like paying taxes, like doing this that and the other. And it's not me trying to shun off responsibility. I'm I'm not afraid of responsibility because I've done it before. Like this this channel is very much more than just a, a stupid let's play channel that I made seven years ago on a whim because it was something that I really wanted to try. This channel is very much a record of my adult life. It has recorded my my thoughts, my feelings, my drives, my passions, uh, my hate, my anger, my my depression, everything. Everything on the colorful spectrum of emotions has been recorded on this channel. Seven years. <coughs> And I think it escapes a lot of people. Seven years is not a small amount of time to dedicate to something. Ugh. Seven years is an incredible amount of time to dedicate to something. I have done a lot in my life in seven years. One moment. Sorry about that. My sinuses are killing me right now. Yeah, I I'm not crying. It's just that my sinuses are fucking killing me. I have to turn down my light because I can't even. It's getting hard to see. Like my sinuses are so congested that I, I, I I'm starting to white out over here on my eye because it's just so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't care about that. That's not why you're. If you made it this far, that's not why you're here listening. Seven years is an incredible amount of time to <sighs> Okay, I promise no more interruptions this time. Good lord, uh 
My sinuses are against me talking for some reason. But seven years is an incredibly long time to dedicate to anything. The amount of time that I have put into making stupid, pointless videos on the internet, playing video games that I enjoy... For as long as I have, if I had put the same amount of passion and uh, enjoyment into anything else, I could have had a career. I could have had a, a college degree. Uh, I, I, I could have done this, that, or the other years ago. Okay? But I think what a lot of people don't understand is those are not the things that I wanted. I didn't start YouTube or start writing to make money or gain fame. I did it because I wanted it. And in a lot of ways, I needed to do it. And and I promise there's a point that I'm I'm go I'm I'm going to get to. I have been working on this version of this story for the better part of two years. All right, but I have been working on Mystic Hills for the better part of five. Okay. <laughs> Like, that's 70%, 70% of the amount of time that I have also been working on YouTube stuff, I have also been working on Mystic Hills stuff, okay? And yes, it has changed. It has evolved as time went on. Mystic Hills was originally just another Minecraft roleplay on the internet that exploded because my street was popular. It's... And then it evolved into a spitefully written and motivated uh, origin story for that universe. But then it changed again when I wanted to rewrite the entire story. And that again evolved into writing my story. Where I finally broke free from the original confines of the old story and created something entirely my own. Created something that, for all of the people that I've shared this with, it is something that just doesn't exist right now. It's not something that's being written all the time. It's not something that people do. And yeah, my style is very different than what you would expect from someone writing something of this size. Like, most people would expect a actually professionally written, uh, grammatic, all, like, super grammatically correct, uh, novel version of what I'm writing. But that's, that's not what I do. I I write it with 
a script like dialogue like specifically pointing out who is talking with novel like descriptions and it's not something that most people do and it's very it's very much me it's very much mine it's very much a style that i enjoy and that i like writing in and it's one of those things that as i keep writing more and more and more and more i become more and more and more proud of the amount of progress that i make Like, I wrote this yesterday. Like, these two pages here, the the ending of the first act, I wrote this yesterday. I did it in about 20 minutes. Okay? It took me about 20 minutes to write all this out and get it all done. And that's that's the kind of stuff that pours out of me whenever I am actually in my inspired uh, and completely passionate uh, writing mode, all right? it's It just bursts out of me. And it's not something that I plan. I can't just sit down and throw up a couple of pages every day. If I could do that, I would be every writer ever. All right, I, I I'm no I'm no Tolkien, I'm no Mar I'm no George R. R. Martin, I'm no Stephen King, and and I kind of put myself in that category because I I'm a dark fantasy writer. And for those of you who are gonna sit there and tell me that Lord of the Rings is not dark fantasy, it's dark fantasy. Game of Thrones is dark fantasy. Uh. All of Stephen King's writings are dark fantasy. And it's something that people just don't... Exp it's a genre that not many people really explore. And it's not really a genre that people see all the time. And I had a conversation with someone... Uh, what was it? Two days ago? Three days ago? Um about, well, why not just make it a regular fantasy? Why not make it a light fantasy? Like, wouldn't that be easier to write? And I'm like, no. Regular and light fantasy are exceptionally boring, derivative, and cliche. It's a genre that's been completely tapped out by every movie, every TV show, every book ever. It's it's something that has been it's it's a type of genre that's been completely tapped out. People are tired of seeing it, and, and people it, it's one of those genres that it's really hard to screw up, but it's also really easy to laugh at in a lot of situations. But, like, and, and this is an aspect in writing that I, I, I have always been extremely proud of. I don't feel bad about killing characters. In fact, I take a lot of pride in killing characters that the reader cares about but only when it serves the narrative. Like, there's there's a lot of stories that just kill characters to be cruel, that just kills innumerable amounts of people to, to make it seem dark, to, to make it seem like there's stakes, like, it, to make it seem like there's... Uh, 
that there's pressure on the protagonist to save the day, all right? But... And it's something that I absolutely heavily agree with and a, and a lot of other uh, really, really, really good dark fantasy is that sometimes people sometimes people just die. Like, that that's also a reality in the real world that people have to accept is that the world isn't sunshine and rainbows. Like, people die every day. But at the end of the day, they're still people. And if you connect with people on any kind of level, you feel bad when they die. And if I, if you make it through, uh, specifically Act 2, when I finish Act 2, if you make it through Act 2 without crying, I have failed as a writer, Okay. And, and see, there it was. Like, you, you – uh, I don't know if you were paying attention, but I, I, I suddenly lit up, and you can see the passion in my face when I start talking about this. Anytime I start talking about my Mystic Hills, I get super into it. I get super excited. I get very passionate, and I get very emotive when I start talking about it because – it is something I have an immense amount of passion for. It is something that I have an immense amount of pride in. Because it's something that I have never done before. That I have always wanted to try and do. And that it's... it's as I said before, it's easily the most ambitious and possibly life-changing work that I have ever done. And... I don't, I don't do it anymore. Like, I'm going to stress that. I don't do it anymore out of some petty spite to, or some ulterior motive to get back at Mania for what she, she did to me. Don't get me wrong. I still hold a grudge. I still will never forgive her. And I still absolutely despise the person that she has become. But that doesn't mean I have to care about what she's doing. Whatever it is she's doing right now, I literally couldn't give any less of a shit. I have grown completely numb and apathetic to anything happening in her life because... the, the This project has grown beyond her. It has grown beyond what she initiated with that original season of Mystic Hills. Because it evolved from just another role play into something a little more interesting in season two, into something completely different in season three, which was a lot, which, by the way, season three. I am immensely proud of the original version of Season 3, regardless of if it still exists or not. It probably doesn't. It wouldn't surprise me if she deleted it, along with everything else. But it's still in here. Because whether she wants to admit that to herself or not, but she's admitted it to me. Uh, but that's where it all came from. Season 3, specifically, was all from here. 
it was my imagination, it was my vision, and it was my works that made season three. And it was, it might as well have been an entirely different show. It might as well have been an entirely different story. Because if you were to take season three out of the Minecraft uh, aspect and just read it straight on, it would be more similar to what I'm working on now than it would be what it was. Or what it turned out to be, sh should I say. Because I think... As I've continued to uh, evolve and think more about things like this, I think the roleplay format, specifically in certain games, is excessively limiting to any kind of storytelling. It doesn't matter what game you're using it, using it, Minecraft, Skyrim roleplays, uh, Ark roleplays, it doesn't matter what game you're roleplaying in, you are limited to by what you can do in those games. Okay? Your imaginations can carry you as far as you want. But whenever you start trying to bring your vision to life, it's an entirely different story. You can only do and get away with so much. You have to stay inside this tiny little box whenever you're doing those things. You, you can't go outside the box. You can't uh, go around the box. You can't you can't expand the box. You, you can only stay in a, a reasonably sized box that you have put yourself in. And if you don't realize that, you will continue to sit in this cycle. Of trying idea after idea after idea after idea and realize that it just doesn't work in the format that you're putting it in. That the medium that you're trying to use doesn't work with what you want. And, and that's why I don't... Like, I want to make it clear, I don't care if you make Minecraft roleplays. I don't care if you make roleplays of any kind. If that's what you like doing, by all means, please do. But you can't ignore the, the facts of the matter. Especially when it comes to storytelling. You can only do so much in terms of a story when you're using a medium that is already predetermined with pre has already made with predetermined limits outside of your control It's one of those things that if if all I ever want is to leave some part of me behind. I want something that I create that very much marks that I exist in. And I don't even, I don't care how many, I don't care about the numbers or the logistics about who reads it. But I, I want 
to write this story. I want to have it published. I want to have something for me to leave behind for, for, for everyone. And not because I'm writing it for those people, but because I'm doing it for me. I'm not writing this story because I hate someone, because... I used to care about someone, that I used to love someone, that I used to be friends with someone. I'm not doing it because I want to 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 gain fame. I don't want to to make money. I'm not doing it for those reasons. I'm doing it for me. Because I care about it. Because I'm passionate about it. Because I'm proud of it. That's why I want to do it. And personally, that's only that's the only reasons I ever need. And I, I know I've kind of... rambled on about this a little too much I've uh <sighs> fucking twitter I've uh tried so hard This, if anything in my life, this is my magnum opus. This story is all I ever want to achieve. I All I ever want to complete is this story. And I don't care even if just one person buys a copy when I do eventually try to get it published, I don't care. That will be... That will be mission accomplished. And I think that's as good as any to, to end this on. I... love writing this story i i love writing these characters and i have so much passion for for creating this world and i'm not even close to done there's, there's so many things that are stuck up here that I can't just force out of my brain. If I could, I absolutely would. Because it, to me, it deserves to be written. It deserves to be made. It's one of those things that it's it's and it's very much mine i've poured every single bit of me into this and that that makes me happy So, anyway, uh, 
I I probably should should stop talking. Uh, I'm I'm still not well. I don't feel well. Like, if if you wanted an update on how I've been recently, because I've very much not been making updates at all. I am not in the greatest spot mentally, physically, or emotionally. Uh, physically, I've been sick for over a week, almost two weeks. Uh, I wake up with my leg in pain every single day. There's, there's good pain days and there's bad pain days, and there's only so much I can do to manage that. Uh, I'm, I'm in psychological pain all of the time. Uh, part of it is due to the, the seasonal, seasonal depression because it's the end of the year and it's, it's just that time of year for that. Uh, and it's just been... It's been tough. Like, it's been tough. I've I've been... There are a lot of days that I can't even manage to stay out of bed for more than a couple hours at a time. I, I am just so exhausted all of the time. If I were... If I was a responsible adult, I would have already gotten a new job four or five months ago when I had opportunities to, to take. But I am a, a creature of passion. Uh, my passions absolutely rule me, uh, every single day. Uh, it's what drives me, and it's what, what pushes me to try to be better. And a lot of times, it's what pushes me away from people. Like, I am not, I don't consider myself a good friend. Like, if there are people who are watching this and you, you've been friends with me for a long time, you, probably you, you understand more than anyone that I'm not always the greatest at reaching out. I am not always the greatest at putting my best foot forward, trying to be there for other people. But that door is always open. Even if I mentally can't be there for you, I will push myself to the absolute brink of my sanity to be there physically. I try so incredibly hard to... to be there for people. I, I do. And it, it, it's one of those things that's kind of a, a, it's a dichotomy of, I try so incredibly hard, I put all of this effort in, and I, I, I put all of my time into that, but I can't ever stop people from leaving. I can't ever stop people from not talking to me. I can't ever stop uh, the the immense periods of silence that people have between interacting with me. And I, that's not something I can change. I, I've learned as I've gotten older that if people want me around, they'll say something. I can't always keep putting in all this time and all this effort into the people who won't 
uh, reciprocate that kind of effort. And that's just the reality of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been talking for for over an hour. Uh, I This should be, this probably won't be the full, full thing. Uh, there's probably a million and a half more things that I probably should talk about. Um, but probably not for this video. So, anyway, I think I'm done for now. So, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll be back soon.